So let us start. Uh, okay. So today's lecture, the theme is uh, risk-based engineering framework. Last time we had this introduction uh, that we covered, and now uh, discuss the uh, salient feature of risk-based engineering. Detailed topic topics will follow. So um, uh, let, let us see what are the fundamentals of uh, you know uh, risk-based engineering. Um, it deals with what can go wrong, okay, and uh, what will be the consequences. These two. So you can see the uh, the information from the plant where we are want to implement this uh, risk-based engineering model uh, has to come in two parts: what can go uh, wrong and how frequently it happens. So here you get the likelihood of the accidents or undesired scenario, and then you have this consequences. So for every event, there are consequences. So some are less or uh, negligible, and some are very severe also. So uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, previous lecture, the uh, statement of risk is given by the likelihood into consequences per year. And that's how the risk becomes a, a scientific statement for uh, defining or addressing safety issues. Uh, because it, is, it has got a mathematical correlation. And finally, you get the estimate of the risk from the plant or uh, system that you are analyzing. Okay, then how the chronology? Uh, of science of uh, uh, risk assessment or safety assessment has moved uh, deterministic uh, analysis as I uh, mentioned uh, it was the only tool and uh, it was so robust tool um, so if, uh, it uh, was uh, some, somewhere 1960 it came into uh, play and then um, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it satisfied the nuclear committee and it uh, I, would, I would say you can give credit to deterministic safety assessment for ensuring the highest level of safety and making nuclear industry as the, uh, one of the safety, safest system actually. Okay, then probabilistic risk assessment came because uh, uh, you, uh, you know, when we operate the plant, when we design the plant, we need flexibility, sometimes uh, due to resources, sometimes due to demand. So then uh, deterministic, probabilistic together, they, uh, they delivered a very uh, integrated environment. It is called risk-informed approach. Okay. So now these approaches are being used extensively wherever there, is a, there are regulatory reviews or even for developing this application, so we will come to those uh, things in detail. But uh, again, now there is a new paradigm called uh, integrated risk-based engineering. So uh, the new paradigm integrated risk-based engineering uh, where it says uh, PRA does not play a complementing or supporting role, it works with the uh, it works with the deterministic approach and these two tools together they uh, they make the whole analysis or uh, engineering development more holistic in nature so uh, but then this is uh, relatively recent and uh, um, there is a uh, your literature shows there is an increasing interest in integrated risk based um, approach or engineering okay so now we come to the uh, central topic that is what is the uh, risk based uh, engineering framework RBE I will be using this word so we have to start with the problem statement first ok what is the problem actually um, if a problem is well defined in terms of uh, objective function scope and resources that are available and the limitation and what is the what are the gains that will be available uh, it comes from the specification we will come to that uh, point uh, later on uh, and then uh, the problem definition it puts uh, requirement on what is expected from deterministic and what is uh, expected from probabilistic these two approaches they have cross talk among themselves because deterministic approach gives the probabilistic approach the failure criteria and many other things but failure criteria and design uh, details and uh, probabilistic approach will uh, tell us ki what is the likelihood uh, uh, for that failure failure criteria what is the system unavailability uh, if it is at system level, level or at plant level what could be the consequences so then these two when these two join together it makes the uh, integrated risk assessment okay so once the integration has been done and we are able to give a holistic statement along with the arguments uh, of integrated uh, risk assessment. So here what we have is a quantitative output as well as 
uh, supporting arguments, deterministic and probabilistic both arguments, and then it goes to the next stage where the it is uh, seen in the context of goals and criteria. In fact, when the process is going on, gone, that time also uh, uh, you have to uh, see whether at every step we are meeting the goal and criteria, and then it goes to the next stage. Uh, what is the residual uh, work that needs to be done? So. Uh, suppose if we are working on an aging plant and then we want to extend the life, then what are the additional uh, monitoring arrangement uh, um, provision will be required? Or if it is a new plant, uh, somehow um, the designer feel a certain component need to be monitored uh, for its health. And, what the, and then what should be the surveillance frequency? So those things are discussed here so that the whole topic becomes close to defining the te technical specification for the uh, plant or system. And then, and finally, uh, for communication, whether they are meeting safety availability goal or not. Okay? So if they are meeting, then acceptance criteria and all are met, then the analysis or whatever project is uh, takes the go to the next stage uh, for implementation. If no, then redefine the problem. And then again, the feedback loop starts like that. So now let us go to uh, uh, major feature of PRA, uh, even though we have talked about it, but still let us uh, take a uh, you know uh, revision of this. As, as I said, PRA is a comprehensive and structured approach to identifying failure. That is how it has entered, and it is uh, now in real time. Most of the plants are having because it is documentable decisions or whatever analysis has been done. Uh, it is there for anyone to see. It is open to uh, review what decisions were taken. Um, then uh, uh, wherever more conservatism is there, wherever the causes are, uh, the, uh, like there is one uh, phenomena called common cause failure. How much is the common cause failure, com com uh, you know, contribution, how, mu how much is the human failure? I said initially, human factor is one of the major factor. It is not that human do a lot of mistakes. It is a, a, a wrong notion. Actually, uh, humans are involved right since uh, designing, uh, conceptual design, uh, design, final design, operation, maintenance, regulation. So human, human, human is a uh, you know common thread. Now, if that is the case, then definitely anywhere the if you analyze an event why it has happened, the root cause will be the human error. But that is not to take it as a key human do mistakes and all that. No, it is because what condition and whether our science about human uh, human behavior has been understood well. Um, if you ask me. A lot has to be done because uh, human uh, failure probability uh, is one of the uh, issues uh, that is having uh, relatively higher uncertainty compared to the hard hardware component. Well, so then PSA is there. Let us be happy now. When we do level one PSA, nine for for hundred percent plant level one PSA has been done. That means uh, the system analysis, how system works, and how it can go into the failure stage. So from here. The statement of core damage frequency will come, and then you go to the level state. That means the plant damage has happened, and now uh, whether the, uh, the the hazard has entered or radioactivity has entered into the uh, containment. So uh, what we do is uh, that level two analysis is done, where uh, the air movement and then uh, what kind of activity or if it is a leakage. Uh, how much amount of uh, uh, coolant has come out there and uh, uh, various uh, uh, radioactivity built up and then there is a filtration system so whether the activity goes out and uh, uh, most of the portion of the radio radioactivity is filtered out and then level 3 is what reaches in the public domain that is risk to the public. So this is level, level uh, PRA is performed at three levels, level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 1 is containment analysis, uh, so level 1 is system analysis, level 2 is containment analysis, and level 3 is consequences in the public domain. Okay, so now, uh, 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 okay, we come to our central topic again, uh, and we say that uh, there are 15 major procedural elements of risk-based engineering framework. And this slide is the important slide. Uh, I'll spend uh, time. I'll go to the respective slide and come back here because it it uh, it uh, tried to uh, throw light on all steps. Some of them in little detail, and some of them uh, are self-explanatory. So the first uh, uh, step is uh, okay. As we can see here, requirement specification. 
uh, we said problem statement and all those things in previous slide they are they are all forming part over here then risk characterization what we mean by risk how it is defined and how the the insight from uh, risk studies can be utilized to solve real time problems then uh, as we said that uh, for the plant we have to define set of events which threaten the safety of the plant so list of initiating or threat condition you know definition and then uh, what are the provisions protection provisions are meant into the plant which uh, keeps the plant safe actually okay and then what is their reliability or availability or unavailability and all and then uh, once we get into the domain of uh, these three steps are basically pre we can say pre uh, risk based engineering approach and then the fourth step is plant and data information and record this collection and this uh, according to me it, it takes a lot of time and um, i will be frank that it takes almost like 70% of the time for analysis and uh, then uh, you have the deterministic assessment um, as i mentioned uh, the salient feature of the deterministic safety assessment and then uh, human factor assessment because uh, apart from common cause failure human, human factor uh, uh, to some extent dominates even the uh, even the uh, contribution to the risk Uh, that has been found even in the risk assessment also, um, and then probabilistic risk assessment. When all the data is there, probabilistic risk assessment operates one because of logical model of the plant, uh, fault tree, event tree, and second thing is data. So these are the two broad, uh, uh, you know, uh, sets of information that is required uh, for uh, having a probabilistic risk assessment. And then one of the best advantage of uh, probabilistic approach is it defines uncertainty. Uh, of any given scenario uh, and it comes into form aleatory and uh, you know epistemic but we'll discuss those things later on uh, so uncertainty characterization uh, quant using quanti quantified estimates uh, is one of the feature of uh, risk based engineering approach which was pa is part of pra also but here it connects to the application uh, levels and then sensitivity analysis these two steps uh, they are basically um, they basically combine with the plant actually And then we have uh, uh, domain specific assessment every analysis have some domain characteristic like a chemical plant will have hazard different hazard so treatment will be different nuclear plant have radiation as a hazard uh, which is uh, there in the reactor and in uh, you know pool or so uh, uh, a transport hazard is spread all over in a special domain so every hazard has typical characteristic and it has to be uh, addressed in a uh, certain way so that is how all uh, risk analysis forensic it, it, it must have a different methodology the broad feature will remain same but then it will have some its own specific elements actually and having this the integrated assessment is done that this basically is a deliberatory process it is basically uh, you know uh, thermal hydraulic tools and uh, you know structural tools uh, they will be taken and then they will be an analyzed okay uh, so that we can give integrated uh, risk assessment of the plant in both uh, that is deterministic and probabilistic term actually okay and then the qualitative attributes any study we do if our quality attributes qualitative attributes are designed uh, uh, developed by either organization level or it is uh, designed at uh, national level or at international level uh, quality attribute means minimum characteristic that makes the analysis credible okay so if all uh, the attributes are meeting that means our uh, work analysis meeting all the quality criteria and is it is one of the uh, best studies actually it is made, it might meet the international norm also or right? it definitely meets international norm when we use international bench uh, benchmark criteria conditions okay uh, so and then this is a very important step in uh, 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 risk based engineering monitoring and phm monitoring was happening even earlier also surveillance monitoring is a part of uh, operational scenario in design also things are monitored parameters are monitored but here uh, we are talking about prognostics and health management this is a relatively new field uh, wherein um, whichever uh, structure is to be monitored uh, sensors are placed then uh, pre processing of the data post processing of the data and then finally Uh, feature extractions are occurred and then we tell what is the remaining useful life
doesn't it give a lot of confidence once we know that a component's remaining life statement is there with us so uh, it helps actually you know and then comparison with the risk acceptance criteria okay so um, uh, once you compare and um, everything is good then you can go ahead um, in fact uh, it requires an independent uh, regulatory review and approval also so so that means the study is good and it is credible and whatever uh, analysis application that was subjected it meets the criteria and then when the next periodic review comes it will be again taken up actually so let us see first what we mean by requirement specification okay so let us see requirement specification is what basically the uh, objective and scope of the analysis should be very well defined then for any analysis to be done the management approval or management uh, should be there with this uh, whether in terms of objective scope or the detail uh, that need to be investigated uh, so that uh, we are having the right benefit uh, in terms of reducing risk or increasing the reliability and then um, uh, assumptions are formed assumptions uh, assumptions are very critical because it can make the uh, uh, you know and there is a way to address the assumptions right in the beginning if data information or any uh, 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 any input that is required is not available study can start with the assumption but later on this assumption have to be addressed and this study will be seen in the light of this assumption in fact in fact when the study completes that is risk based engineering process completes um, it uh, the the uh, statement should be there validating that these assumptions uh, whatever uh, whatever gray area was there that has been addressed in no uncertain word then uh, uh, that's why top management approval is required because you require resources it is technical manpower it is uh, software tools that we require required expertise which will determine the quality of the study project time and uh, across the data and information and uh, how regulators are overseeing this so peer review and compliance checks and last is uh, over a period of time we will come to know what are the benefits of this study so a well formulated uh, specification will definitely uh, uh, align the whole uh, uh, analysis or implementation work and uh, uh, provide improved benefits so this was the first step in our risk based engineering uh, thing and now the next is threat and initiating event it's very simple if we are, i have built a plant if i have my built my plant in a seismic zone relatively higher uh, uh, level of uh, uh, seismic levels then the seismic becomes the candidate component for me predominantly even for other studies also will uh, will be required but is quite possible that the detailing which is required in the higher zone uh, will be more and uh, then uh, it has to meet this criteria very well uh, suppose if uh, uh, fire fire could be one of the uh, then flood and then for uh, if i am i am from nuclear industry so loss of coolant uh, uh, earlier it was considered as a maximum critical extent but then later on as the psa came into picture deterministic approach also improved best estimate and all that a set of initiating uh, the plant is validated against set of initiating events uh, where some are plant specific some are generic in nature like flood characteristic will be defined by where the plant is located and uh, then security challenges object impact security is a, a new element in our risk analysis we will discuss it later as i mentioned in my previous slide we will definitely and then uh, outside object impact Uh, you know what it is uh, what we are trying to sell and there are many more all the events cannot be disclosed in public domain but there are the, the events where there is academic academic element information element definitely can be uh, discussed you know so so then uh, threat has been defined now uh, if threat comes uh, what are the inbuilt provision in the plant uh, as i mentioned last time uh, in car we have braking system we have fire protection system Uh, we have um, uh, we have other safety system which saves uh, um, uh, us from accident you know navigation system so many things you know so so uh, so uh, safety system uh, so for any complex engineering system because our subject is complex engineering system there are um, couple of at least 5 to 5 uh, to 
safety system, major safety system, where even fire system also is one of the uh, one of the safety system. Uh, then uh, domain specific safety systems uh, like for nuclear plant has to be shut down uh, efficiently. Uh, then it has to be maintained in a cool. So the cooling comes into the big picture. Okay. And then um, safe shutdown, cooling, then isolation, certain systems to be isolated very efficiently so that, you know, uh, a plant can be maintained in safe state and then maintaining the barrier integrity and uh, sustained plant operation. Once the transient is over, that is either reactor is shut down or plant has been brought back uh, to normal operation from, from any deviation, then sustained operation should be assured. And again, here also the role of monitoring becomes very important, actually. So, like simple example of a safety system for a nuclear plant. We have a reactor core where heat uh, keeps producing okay, uh, when the reactor is operating. Uh, a typical characteristic of nuclear plants is <laughs> even if the plant is shut down, the, uh, the decay heat keeps producing. And uh, this need to be cooled on 24 into 7 basis, uh, whether flow is uh, normal operation maybe um, x, so shut down it will be uh, 0.1x but the flow is required through the core. And then you have a steam generator which runs the turbine and get power supply actually. But that is not the subject. Subject here, here is safety. So there is a system called emergency core cooling system. This is reactor core. So if any breach happens in this closed loop, okay, uh, hot water goes up uh, and the uh, steam generator uh, cold water enters the uh, reactor core. Now. So there is a system design, if any breach occurs and there is a threat to, uh, threat to uh, uh, reactor core, which is determined in terms of uh, uh, thermal hydraulics and process parameters. And finally, a signal goes to, plant is brought back to the, uh, the shutdown state. Uh, there are production devices there. So plant is shut, shut down, but as I said, decay heat removal. So uh, uh, heat continuously, uh, even at lower rate, it keeps producing. So you have to cool the plant, so you can see two redundant trains are there, train one, train two. Here is a classical example of uh, redundancy for injecting cold water into the reactor. But again, redundant, uh, in train also, there are two walls. These are walls which uh, uh, sig uh, getting signal, they open, okay? And then the train, both the trains, they supply water to the uh, reactor. And uh, uh, th this is the accumulator. Uh, the pre-accumulated water, um, certain quantity is maintained. The moment there is a threat uh, in terms of uh, loss of cooling, uh, pump start automatically. The ruptured disk, which acts as a uh, physical boundary between uh, the system and this one, separation boundary. So it ruptures because of pump pressure and the water is uh, same phenomena occurs in uh, the other loop also. And the core cooling requirements are met. And whatever leaked out water is there, it again find its place into the accumulator or some other tank and from there the in closed loop the water uh, cooling continues. So and it, it has been found that these systems are very useful um, though leak, occurring leakages in loop is a very 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 rare phenomenon but if it occurs it has to be um, so loca is a very low uh, frequency event actually the frequency will be of the order of 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 4 per year you know. Um, like class 4 power failure. The frequency is, it could be 1 per year. But then the power failure, the consequences are less. But in loss of coolant, the potential for safety is a little high. So a lot of redundancy, diversity and all that uh, are uh, maintained, you know. Uh, apart from this system, there could be one more system, uh, which uh, from independent source, it supplies water and cools the core. So system redundancy, component redundancy, uh, and then, um, uh, diversity, they are together, they make the system safe actually. So now we have come to that safety functions um, that we have explained and now in short, though this is one of the major job in terms of time, resources and all, uh, uh, we can discuss this also.